good evening. Good to see everyone. Let's all stand. 539 in your hymn book, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. From sin and the grave, we were to a great time in the Lord's house, and thank you for that, men, and we're excited about all that God has for us tonight. I'm going to ask you to be seated. I'm going to ask Brother Roebuck, if he doesn't mind. He's a missionary with FBN, and he'll share a little bit about that with what it is, what that means, and uh, he's going to come and uh, just take a couple minutes and then pray for us and open up our service, but uh, they are interested in getting the word, in God, word of God out across the airwaves, and I trust be a blessing, and uh, then he's going to pray for us. Good to be at God's house tonight. My name is my brother Larry Roebuck. I am a missionary representative for the Fundamental Broadcasting Network, a ministry of the Grace Baptist Church in Newport, North Carolina. The FBN reaches around the world with the gospel through radio, internet, as well as apps and telephone. Uh, that's the main objective of FBN is to get the gospel around the world. That's the burden that Brother Clyde Ebron had when God laid upon his heart in 1975. FBN today has 43 stations in 18 states. We're getting to have a new one coming on the air later on in the spring on Prince Edward Island in Alaska. We just had a new station open in Wyoming, a new one up in Erie, Pennsylvania, and we're in negotiations with one in Texas. And so we're getting the word out through the word of God and through radio. But also we have radio stations in 13 foreign countries. Uh, if you, I don't know how far Sneedsville is, but we do have an FBN affiliate up in Sneedsville, Tennessee. Uh, but a lot of times the FCC limits how far those signals can go out. So don't fuss at the station if you can't hear it. They don't have a thing to do with that. <laughs> the FCC did that. But also, when you're not, not available, the radio is not available. You, some of your computer savvy, you can listen to FBN on FBNradio.com. You can also use your Apple app as well as your Android app. And my personal favorite is the way I listen to it in my house. If you got Wi-Fi in your home, you can use an Alexa Echo box to listen to FBN radio. And if all else fails, you can use your telephone. We do have a telephone number you can dial and you can listen to FBE in your house, your car. And it's, it's excellent if you have Bluetooth in your car where you can hook your phone up to your stereo system inside your car. But FBN has reached 236 countries and territories in the world. We're averaging now around 180 countries a month that are listening to FBN. We get about one or two new countries added on to that list about every six or seven months where people are listening to FBN radio. 
But the objective is to get FBN around the world where people can hear the gospel of Christ. Uh, we have a, just a basic plan we want people to do, and that's the first thing and the foremost. FBN asks you to pray for us. Pray that the gospel will get out around the world. It is reaching out. And generally when I give my longer presentation, I tell about the story about the man getting saved in the Antarctica, listening to FBN radio online. And well, then just right here in Virginia, a young lady driving a car, she had the FBN app uh, downloaded on a car. A local pastor, a friend of mine, gave it to her, and she got under conviction and asked God to save her. And there's a lot of stories like that, but we'd never know the full extent of what FBN is doing until we get to heaven. But we ask you to pray. Pray for us. We want you to listen. Like I said, if you don't have a, a, a station available, you do have other means, and then you can listen to that. So we want you to listen to FBN. And third of all, support it as God leads. FBN is supported primarily through two share a year. Uh, we do have churches that put uh, FBN in their mission budget, as well as myself. I am a missionary. I raise my own support as well. And so sometimes it's one or the other or both or not at all, but that's how, how it works sometimes. But God supplies our needs, and he supplies the needs for the station. So we want you to pray. We want you to listen, and we want you to give to FBN. And FBN today is getting the gospel around the world. We are a King James only radio station. Uh, we don't have a bunch of preachers correcting the Bible, spending most of their time correcting the Bible when they, they get up there and preach it. We have children's programs on there. We have Unshackled. We have some of the, the saints who've gone on, like Brother Roloff, Oliver Green, and Maze Jackson, as well as uh, some of the newer preachers like Paul Chapel and Clarence Sexton on FBN. And so we want to encourage you to listen to FBN, but first and foremost, pray for us. And also, FBN plays good traditional church music. Uh, we don't have Southern Gospel and definitely no contemporary. We have a lot of church choirs, ensembles, quartets, trios, duets. We even have uh, some uh, instrumental music on there. Play some patriotic music every now and then. But if you listen to FBN, you feel like you've been to church. And that's the and I want to finish this. FBN is not to replace the church. FBN there is to help the church. And we thank God for being part of this ministry. You pray for me. My wife's normally with me, but she, her mother just got out of the hospital and somebody needed to stay with us. So pray for my wife, Brenda, as well. Pray that God will keep us safe on the road as we go from church to church. I want to thank you for this time tonight, and God bless you. Let's pray. I always forget that part. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to be in this great church. We thank you, dear Lord, for the longevity of its history. We ask God that you bless Brother uh, the pastor tonight, that your will be done. We pray, God, for the man that preaches tonight, that your hand be upon him. There are many here tonight. There are many attired from a good, hard day's work. We pray that you refresh their soul. Bless Brother Herman as he leads. Bless each one here tonight. Touch our hearts. Revive us again that we will rejoice in thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. Thank you so much for that, brother. And we appreciate you coming through. I got to... Um, uh, meet Brother Roebuck at a meeting and uh, that was at last night, and uh, so he was on his way back to North Carolina, and uh, so he was able to stop by and see us. We thank God for him and the ministry, and I hope that you got excited about the gospel being presented on the airwaves around the world, and that's their goal. They've been doing it for years, and we thank God for the continued ministry there. Well, we are going to uh, go to prayer here in just a moment. We're gonna go, I'm going to go over a few prayer requests for you. You've got your prayer sheet that uh, we'll go through in just a moment. I do want to make a couple of announcements, though, before we get to that. Uh, we are looking forward to, uh, not uh, this Sunday, but the following on the 12th. Dr. David Gibbs will be here preaching for us in the morning and the evening, and we'll have a great time. I've already mentioned it several times, but 
you will not be, you will not find yourself disappointed unless it's different than every time I've heard Brother Gibbs preach. You will not be disappointed to have a guest, a co-worker, somebody here with you on that Sunday because it will be a delightful message from the Word of God, and I challenge you to be thinking about who you could have with you on that March the 12th Sunday in the morning or in the evening. And then coming up the, before that, though, the night before that, the outdoor night with Brother Chad Shear. If you're interested in helping in some way, please see Brother Dan, and uh, he'll get you st- uh, taken care of. But also, if you haven't bought a ticket for it, don't forget, we've challenged you to get your own and come. If you're not a great outdoorsman, it'll be a wonderful time with a church family. But then we're also using it as an outreach and a bridge event to get people in. And so I challenge you to buy a couple tickets for some coworker, for some neighbor that uh, you can say, please come be with us on that night. And so we want to leave you with all of that. And then one last thing before we go to this prayer request. A week from tonight, we will start our Equip series, and so we've done this historically in the fall and in the spring, uh, some way to give some things that will equip us as a church. Well, for the next three Wednesday nights, we've got seasoned men of God who will come and preach to us on the, on the subject of prayer. So next, uh, next Wednesday night, a week from tonight, Pastor Austin Cook pastors uh, the Victory Baptist Church just across the, county line, or the state line in Bristol, Virginia. Been there for 50 years, 50-some years as the pastor, and uh, he is a wonderful, uh, delightful man of God. He'll be here preaching a week from tonight. Then the next week, Dewey Williams from uh, Bristol, Tennessee, and then on March the 22nd, uh, the Tim Gammons from over in Walker or uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina, and uh, each of those men, I believe, will bring a different aspect of prayer. They'll preach and equip you for this needed ministry that we have in prayer and the lifeline of our Christian life. So, just that want to share that with you and uh, tell you what's going on now. Next, this coming Sunday night, uh, the uh, court, the um, ensemble from Ambassador Baptist College will be here as, lo- as well as Dr. Beal. We're excited about him being here because uh, we our church was blessed to uh, fund the trip that he uh, took to India. And he'll report on that a little bit, and then his, um, his, the ensemble will sing. But then at the conclusion of that service, uh, everybody's favorite subject is money. <laughs> Not really. I'm just joking on that part. But uh, we will t- we have a church business meeting after that Sunday night service just coming up this week. And what it will be primarily revolving around is the roof on the Family Life Center. So I mentioned it back in January, if you, or maybe before that, a couple months ago, that we were looking at. We have to do that. We've known for some years. It's been leaking for years. And uh, so we're looking into, we're not looking now, we have been looking, getting quotes, and we've got the information I want to present to you next Sunday night. We've had people up on there. We've fixed it a time or two, and uh, but it's just at the end of what we can do. So we're going to tell you about that on Sunday night, and uh, we'll look forward to, I guess, get, look forward to paying and getting it fixed, but we'll talk about that on Sunday night. Let me go over some more important things, and that's about prayer. Um, I want you to be praying for Miss Evelyn Ferguson. She's a church member, but church neighbor as well, just across the street, down several houses. She's at Johnson City Medical Center. Tried to get, a, get with her today, but uh, to no avail. But she fell and uh, injured herself, and then got some other things going on as well. So I want you to be praying for Evelyn. She'll be there at Johnson City Medical Center for the next week or so. So keep her in your prayers. I talked to Nathan Susong right before the service again, and uh, his brother passed away today. So I want you to be praying for Nathan. It was unexpected, and um, so he's had a defibrillator for some time, and it went off to try to get things uh, righted in his heart, but then another trip to the hospital, and uh, so he went home to be with the Lord. So please pray for Nathan. If you're texting or calling or something, if you keep up with him, just text him. Let him know you're praying, but uh, we certainly want to lift him up in that way. Then Brother Larry Stovers over at um, St. Thomas Hospital in Nashville, and uh, he had surgery, uh, had uh, surgery on his back, and uh, he will be over there for another couple days in the hospital, and then he'll stay at their house over there for probably a couple weeks, so there'll be, uh, unless plans change, but they've got some rehab and therapy to do afterwards, and so he's doing good. Uh, he was sitting up watching some, some program on TV, told me a little bit ago, so keep him in prayer, though, and uh, asking the Lord to bless Brother Larry Stover as he heals up. From, uh, from that. And then tomorrow morning at 10.30, Brother Paul Pritchard Jr., not, our, uh, not ours, but uh, his son, uh, our mission, one of our missionaries and faithful uh, servant of the Lord, he'll be having surgery. He'll be having a procedure on his heart, a very intricate thing that they've got to do. He's had different heart procedures and operations done, but he'll have another one in the morning at 10.30. So please pray for Brother Paul's son, Paul Jr., that the Lord would just keep him safe and blessed in that surgery tomorrow. So, 
those are some of the extra ones, but uh, don't forget to be praying for the list that you've got as you came in. Don't forget to pray for Hoppy Brown as he recovers from that knee replacement surgery. Continue to pray for Miss Summer Scroggs over here, praying the Lord just strengthens her, and it was good to see her Sunday, good to see her tonight, but uh, just ask the Lord to strengthen then Evelyn Ferguson there, Larry Stover, and Sherry Edens uh, took a fall the other day, so please keep her in prayer if you would, please. And then Brother Mickey Archer, not here tonight, but uh, is not feeling very well at all, so please keep him lifted up in prayer. Miss Edith Rourke, keep, her pray, keep praying for her. And Miss Pat Scalf and Debbie Deacons and Diana Gallion, ask the Lord to strengthen there. Miss Diana is going to have to have um, radiation, but looks like uh, hopefully not chemo at this point, so that's good. And uh, so she's right under that line, so please keep her lifted up in prayer. And then praying for Brother Lynn Anderson and Joel Johnson and Jan Saylor and Miss Sharon Pritchard, of course, keep her lifted up in prayer. Linda Simpson, Pat Shaw, uh, Larry Gallion, Carl Bond, and uh, then uh, little Drake Cannon will be having... Uh, tubes in his ears and tonsils, adenoids out tomorrow. So keep him lifted up in prayer if you would. Brother Jerry Scalf's got some uh, heart procedures coming up here. They had a little change in plan. So uh, he was supposed to already had something done. Change that a little bit. So keep him lifted up in prayer if you would please. And so we're uh, trusting the Lord in these, all of these cases. Don't forget to pray for our country down at the bottom of the middle section there. Uh, one of our school board members and then a county commissioner. Ask the Lord to strengthen and bless and save those folks that uh, serve in those capacities. And then uh, many of them are believers. We get to talk to them and share the gospel with them. And they're already saved. And I tell them each one, I said, our church is praying for you, that you have the strength to stand in the position that God's put you in. And uh, so I, I brag on our church and tell them our church is a praying church and praying for their leadership. And so uh, the other ones that aren't saved are just tell them we're praying for them. And, of course, you know what that means. We're praying ultimately to get saved. So um, praying for Joyce Jenkins there and uh, Miss Elsie Coyle. So we've got many folks to pray for. Our missionaries listed on the right, the three today, challenge you just as always. Uh, email them. Let them know that who you are, where you're from, that you're praying for them, lifting up in prayer. News from a far country is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, encouragement. So please uh, keep those lift up in prayer and let them know that you're praying for them. Don't forget to pray for um, uh, Victoria Radford. She'll be home in just a day or two. And uh, so her family is so excited from that mission internship in Burkina Faso. And uh, so they're uh, wonderfully anticipating getting joined back together. So pray for safety as she heads home. And then continue to pray for Maddie Brown and brother, and brother Buddy Callahan as well as they continue to serve. Then on the next part, pray for Shannon Barker and our home builders uh, Sunday school class. Lord would strengthen him and a lot of good days have been had in there. Pray that they're able to reach uh, and minister to people in that wonderful class and then praying for uh, Brother Larry and Linda Stover as they help out with our guest services counter out here usually when they're here and uh, praising the Lord for Miss Stephanie Krause and thanking God for her and uh, praying that God would just continue to use her. She does so much work here in the office to help out in so many ways and then we're praying for Brother Scott Martin, our deacon of the week. And uh, sometimes when I say that, the deacon of the week, I think you ought to be able to take this bulletin somewhere and get a free hamburger. You can't, but I feel like you should be able to. So I don't want to confuse you. But, um, and then praying for Brent Scroggs, Matthew Hayes, continue to serve our country, and we're thankful for that. Well, let's do this. Let's go to Lord in prayer, ask him to bless these. Our uh, organist will play something softly through. Pray together as there where you, where you are. And then in just a moment, Brother Dan will come up and close this part of the service in prayer, introduce a video that I believe will be a blessing to you, and then we'll move on with the rest of the service. Let's pray together.
Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege that we have to call on you. And Lord, thank you for the privilege that we have to be called your children. Thank you for providing a way for us to have communication. Lord, we love you, and we're grateful for what you've done for us already this week. Lord, we want to pray specifically tonight for Brother Nathan and his wife, Teresa, and Lord, for uh, Nick's son tonight. Lord, I just pray that you would comfort them and be with them in a special way. Lord, I just pray that you'd wrap your arms around them. As only you know how to comfort, Lord, we pray for that tonight in a special grace that you give. Just be with them. Let them know that we love them, that we're thinking about them. And Lord, that, uh, that, it, Lord, that we know that, that, that you'll be with them. We, we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we're privileged tonight to be able to gather together and around your word. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you'd be with pastor as he preaches here in just a few moments. And then, Lord, I pray that you would help us as we continue to worship you in song, that you'd be with that, Lord, and thank you for the way that you've met with us already. We love you, and we thank you, and we're trusting in you. We place ourselves in your trust as we go through life the rest of this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The missionary video tonight, Ben and Marie Muldoon. You'll remember them from not too long ago. We had the privilege of having them here. They've arrived on the field, and he has an update for us tonight. Hello, Ben Muldoon, church planting missionary to the deaf. My wife, Marie, and I just got to the field about a month ago here in Bucharest, Romania. And so behind me here in the office is a map of the city. We live up in the northern part of the city, and our school is down here, uh, a little past the middle of the city. It takes about uh, 40 to 50 minutes taking public transportation and walking to get to school. And so that's our main focus right now as we, as we learn language and adjust to living in a new place. However, we are building a, a growing list of people that we are uh, meet regularly and are growing relationships with and just asking God to show us if they're already saved, how to encourage them in their walk with the Lord. And if they're lost, um, you know, looking for opportunities to bring in the gospel or give them a gospel tract. Um, actually, thank you for praying for us. We had an opportunity with one of our teachers already to give a gospel tract, and she read it. Um, and so we'll see if the Lord continues to give us opportunities there. Again, thank you so much. I do want to introduce you to the rest of the family and then show you a little bit of this amazing city that we get to live in. Hi! So just want to share a little bit of our lives with you. So this is, of course, Serendia Elena, and she's eating her lunch, and she loves her lunch, and... Um, this is William Brent, and he's about to eat lunch. And then this is our wonderful house help, and um, she's helping us with child care as we focus on language school. She's from Lebanon, and she's a university student here, and going to be a world-famous dentist one day. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And then uh, Penny Sophia is enjoying her sweet potato as well. And so we're very grateful. And this is our kitchen and dining room area. And we're slowly turning this into a home, and we're very grateful for God's provision of a place. And we're about to head out and show you a few of the streets as well. Hello, so this is our house. We live in a duplex, um, three bedrooms, and a nice size living room that'll accommodate Bible studies, which we're excited about. Um, this is actually not our car, this is our landlord's car. Uh, he just stores one of his vehicles here, but he has been a huge, huge blessing, not only with um, the house and everything, but also with the visa paperwork. And that's actually why we don't have a car yet, is because we have to have a visa, um, which we're working on. We have 90 days to do it. And so um, we're, we're praying through that process. If you pray with us, through that, and um, so we'll be walking to the grocery store. Come on. Hey, so here we are on the street. Um, this is our local grocery store, Lidl. We go there 
all the time it seems like. Hey gang, so we are on the side streets of Bucharest. Um, most people will walk, um, some people will take a car, and then there's a lot of public transportation. Um, but uh, it's a very busy city and a lot of vehicles, and so people park wherever they can. And so parking on the sidewalk is very common. Um, just about where we go. This street is a pretty typical street, a big mix of older buildings and, and newer buildings. So some from communist times, some from more recent times. And so, yeah, it's quite quite the quite the city, a little bit of a hodgepodge. Um, and, and a very busy city, lots of people that need the gospel. So thank you so much for sending us here. Let me show you a little bit more. Hey again, so I wanted to show you one last thing on our your introduction to Bucharest, as basically it's our introduction as well to the city. Um, but just about everywhere you'll find the Orthodox Church. Um, so in our area where we live, there's about three nearby. They're all over the city and all over the country. It's very Romanian to be Orthodox. Uh, uh, they are, you know, they are Orthodox in their faith, Romanian Orthodox. Um, our culture helper um, said it's because of tradition and many people have died for this and it's uh, part of their religious classes at school they, they take every week um, is part of those classes. Uh, the large majority of those classes are taught by the Orthodox priest and so continue to pray for us as we uh, continue to learn a lot and learn language and culture and how to communicate the truth that the, it, the price is paid, uh, that, that Christ will bring us into acceptance that we don't have to wait for the light. He is the light of the world and light has already come. So thank you again. I hope you enjoyed your introduction to Bucharest, Romania. God bless. Praise the Lord for Ben and Marie. And thank it was great to hear from them. Let's all stand. Number 270 in your hymn book. Lord, I need you. Let's sing it out on that first verse. Sometimes when life seems gentle and when I see my way, I turn my gaze away and soon forget to pray. Six, nine says, where could I go but to the Lord? I'm so thankful we have him to go to. Amen.
Amen and amen. Thank you again so much for being here. We'll look into the Word of God tonight and we'll continue our Bible study through the book of James. And uh, we're looking at James chapter 1, verse number 22. And uh, we'll begin there and uh, trust will be a blessing to you. And um, we'll hear at just the end of the service. We've got a missionary that slipped in with us and we'll uh, have him, Brother Dan, come up and pray for us at the end if you will remind me of that. But we're looking at James chapter 1, verse number 22. Um, but um, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, uh, but, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted. From the world. Well, I want to preach for just a little while about this hearer and doer. And I know that we all think we know where this is going. And by and large, we do. We get the gist of it just by reading through. But I do want to show you a point or two that I think that uh, as I was getting ready for it, it really dawned on me. And, uh, and I trust it'll be a time of enlightenment for you as well, just to think about some folks that maybe stay in churches for a while that they should not. So let's pray and get started. Father, we thank you for this time. Bless us in this moment that uh, we've got here. We'll never get it back. And I pray that you would bless this message, this lesson to our hearts, and we'll trust you for it in Jesus name. Amen. You know they say there's a or there's a saying for cars that look great but don't run so good. And they uh, they look like they'd be really fast but they're not and that sh that uh, that saying would be all show and no go. I mean, they look like they'd be wonderful. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but sometimes used to be, and sometimes people still do those uh, little pocket squares, you know, that match your tie a little bit, and looks like you stuff it down in there. My nephew used to have a saying for that. He said those were for show and not for blow, because you weren't supposed to get those out and blow on them. You know, they were for just showing. Well, that's the type of Christian that we're getting down to in this passage. Those people that are for show, they've got some things that they are liking the way it looks, but they're not really getting down to the obedience unto the Word of God. Because remember this, God doesn't put His Word out there just to, 
Well, it does comfort you, but that's not all it does. He doesn't put it out there to be fluff in your life. He doesn't put it out there so you can tell other people about what it says. Although he does do that, that's not its only purpose. The word sinks into you, and then is the only time you're the, 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 you're the best way of giving it out. FBN, as, uh, as Brother Roebuck came up and said, the reason they want to get out is to get the word of God into people's hearts. They don't not only want to uh, show it, but they want to let people absorb it into their lives. So I'm looking at this as we get started tonight, and we see that if you're, but be a doers of the word, that's what God's interested in, not those people that know it or hear it, but doers. So we're going to start in verse number 22, be you doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So I look at it first, if you're filling out the blanks of the sheet that you got, we can be deceived. We can be fooled. We can be, have the wool pulled over our eyes. We can be uh, taken in by Here's the end of the phrase, deceiving your own selves. And this is what the revelation that came to me as I was thinking about this. How can someone stay in a church, a friend of yours, maybe a neighbor of yours, a relative of yours, and maybe you go visit with them on Christmas or somewhere else, and, and you hear some things in that church, and there you, you know that it's totally contrary to the Word of God. How do they stay in there? Because if, maybe you know them, you know them well, you know they're saved. How do you stay in there? Well, I believe they deceive their own selves. They're hearing sometimes what they want to hear. They're taking it and applying it the way they want. So, well, there's a few things, but we just let those slide. Because what the Bible says, it's not that you're deceived by somebody else, but that you're deceiving your own selves. So we've got a deceived hearer. There's a condition that we can get in to where I'm fooling myself. How many of you know people that I can tell, I know people that they've, not, not necessarily talking about spiritual things, but you know people, they've convinced themselves of some things that weren't true. Sure, we all do. And you, from the outside, you look at it and say, it's as plain as the nose on my face. But they have bought into that, uh, uh, that, that um, they, they bought into that narrative that they're trying to sell and trying to sell themselves and we see that that not only happens in other areas of life but also happens in our relation to the Word of God. So we see that we can deceive ourselves but we can also, as it goes on to say in verse number 23, we can be these forgetful hearers. We know the story of walking away from the mirror, just like it says here in verse number 23 and uh, for if you hear the Word, not a doer, he's like a man. Uh, or he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, or that means a mirror that you come and you look and you look and you look, and then you say, well, you move away and you don't do anything. Now, we've all seen some people say, boy, it must be that they didn't look in the mirror because they would have fixed something about that. Now, remember that sometimes you just got to do what you can with what you got. Maybe they did the best they could. But we understand that story. We know that the story of walking away from the mirror without doing anything to fix. But the Bible talks about these people being the forgetful hearers. Now, I know, ladies, you're thinking this. I know a forgetful hearer. You married ladies. You're thinking that the Word of God's talking about your husband when you send him to Food City. I need this. And you give him three short things, short, one, one short list of three things on there. And how many of you know, he'll, he may come back with six things, but not of the, none of the three things that were on your initial list. That's not a forgetful hearer that the Bible is talking about. That is a forgetful hearer, but those are your words, not God's words. And you say, I know, but I wish he'd listen to God's words and my words. Well, that's another sermon. We're not getting onto that tonight. We understand that the Bible talks about these forgetful hearers. So whether we're a deceived hearer or, or one that we're just forgetting, maybe because of the busy times in which we live, we're forgetting to pay attention to the Word of God. Take heed unto the Bible says in another passage. But we can be deceived. And then we look on down in verse number, that was in verse number 23 and 24, forgetting what manner of man he was. But we see in verse number 25 that we're, if we're a doer, then this brings the blessings of the Lord. Look at verse 25. But whosoever looketh into, whoso rather, looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, as we just talked about, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now there is this teaching that's out that you can't do anything in your Christian life to bring more blessings upon you because God's already blessed you as much as he's going to bless you. 
there's partly right about that and partly wrong. God's blessed us beyond all we can imagine. It, it, you're, you're walking. You're, if you're not walking, and you're, even if you're wheelchair-bound or something, God's still blessing you, and you've got all these blessings. But there is this aspect, as it's given here in the Word of God, that we live a certain way, and then that invites blessings on our lives. You like the Bible, if you want to give the, uh, the, the, the plain Scripture truth, the Bible says, the ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. I heard about this fellow. He said, well, I'm going to try that out. And he took his brother, and he hit him in the nose. He said, well, the Bible is true. <laughs> well, you got to remember, you better be bigger than your brother if you're going to do that, because he may come back and draw blood again to you. But the Bible is true, and here it says that when we live this way, in the, in the way that we obey the Word of God, it is as if we're sending invitations, the blessings, to say, come my way. Now, we're all blessed. God's long-suffering. He gives us so much. But the Bible says we're doing this, being a doer of His Word. It's as if we're bringing these blessings, and God is shining on us. I love what the Word of God says here in this verse. So would you look again at verse number 25? And I want you to see if you're living this verse. Whoso looked in the perfect law of liberty, and the next phrase, and continueth therein. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved, or even if you go past that, sometimes when we get saved, we didn't really grow very much because we were just unfortunately maybe stayed a baby Christian for a while, but maybe you got serious some year or two or three after you got saved. Many of us, we just dilly-dallied around there for a while and didn't really get into the Word of God. It was in, God was in us, but we weren't really seeking Him. But then you finally got the switch turned on and you said, boy, I'm really going to seek the Lord now. But however long it's been that since then, you are needed, or it's needed in your life for you to be a continuing hearer. Let me drive home what I mean by that. I'll just pick somebody. I don't know. David Airwood, how long have you been saved? 28 years. See, we didn't even think you were that old. We thought you were got saved at a young age. And... Brother David, I know I, I didn't ask him before this, but you're still trying to read the Word of God and hear things that you can do today and tomorrow and this week, correct? So 28 years is not enough to say, I don't have to continue any longer. Brother Paul, how long have you been saved? 59 years. You still going to look into the Word of God this week, try to find some things that God needs to, or God isn't done with you, is He? He's still working on you. Well, Brother Paul's got a lot of rough edges to work, knock off. Some people, you understand, God's got a lot more to do on, you know? But he is trying. I know both of these men, they are trying to be what the Bible says in verse number 25. They're trying to be those continuers, continuing therein. And so it's amazing. Brother Roebuck, how long have you been saved? 47? Well, you got started early, didn't you? Yeah, you're still trying to get in the Word of God, though, and let it continue in your life. And so what I'm trying to say to all of us is, it doesn't matter whether you've been saved a few months, a few years, or decades. What the Word of God says is, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty doesn't give an exclusion. There is no sinless perfection level that you get to. There is no plateau. You say, well, I'm going to quit here. Well, Lever, I would have asked you, but everybody knows you need to get into the Word of God, right? You still work, is God still working on you? <laughs> and continueth therein. I just was arrested by that word as I was looking over this. And I wanted to ask the question when I got to this part, I'm, I got it in my notes. Are you that continuer? And only you can answer that for you. I'm, I'm asking, when's, when's the last time that you read something in the Word of God and the Lord just kind of squeezed you? He said, wow, that's, that's me. Or maybe it may be in a church service too, not because I was preaching, but just somebody. Maybe he's listening online. Somebody told me the other day they were listening to some good sermons online from somebody. I don't remember. But it didn't matter who it was on the Bible preaching. Um, when was the last time that you were listening? They said, boy, oh boy, that got all over me. 
and there's something I need to change. Let's not get into the place where just because you all cleaned up, you got over, you got, you make sure you dressed up for church and you got here and you got all that and you don't do some of the things you used to do. Don't get to the place where you think that you're done. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, how long you've been walking with Him, how long you've been hearing Him. As, as far as when I was preparing this, thinking about this, dwelling on it, I love that word, continue therein. And I think that is the secret to this guy or girl that doesn't just look at the law and then walk away and not do anything about the law of liberty that he looked into. Because what the Bible says we're supposed to do is the hearer is supposed to become the doer. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of, this, of the work. The Bible's to be obeyed. How many of your parents in here? Maybe they're out of the house. Maybe you don't claim them, but you know, your parents. Brother Paul, you've got kids. He's not raising his hand. What'd you give your, what'd you give your kids an instruction for? To hear yourself vocalize some more thoughts? No. Sometimes you think that. <laughs> I used to tell Amy, I said, don't tell them so much. You know, just uh, keep the commands down, you know, and, but uh, we don't tell them to do things just so we can hear our own self talk, do we? We tell them those things because we want to instruct them. There's something they're doing they need to quit, or there's something they're not doing that they need to start. So you as mom or dad, you come alongside of them and you say, we need to change that. And then if they're in the middle of something that they're going to get hurt, you, you do it with a lot more fervency. You know, you understand that. But you are instructing them. You're not instructing them to, so they would just ignore it. You're instructing them so you'll do it. So why would God as a father, our father, our heavenly father, be any different? So if we take his instructions, then we heed his instructions, we continue in there, or we complete those, and then we become a doer and not a hearer only. So we see that we're supposed to be a doer, and it brings those blessings, and I trust that that's the way we are living our lives. I'll give you the last one in verse number 26 and 27, this vain religion that it talks about. The Word of God kind of changes gears just a little bit here. And if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue... <clears throat> but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. You've all heard this little statement. If you haven't, let me give it to you. Uh, Randy Merrill, a friend of ours that used to do Bible schools all the time, he would say it as he came in to the kids. He would say your, uh, your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. You with me? So meaning the way you walk talks or it says something. The way that you talk, talks. It says something. But your walk talks a lot louder than your talk talks. Meaning people are listening to what you say, but they're not listening to what you say near as much as they're watching what you do. You can tell that person, oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I go to church. I go to this church. I go to there. I go, to, I go faithfully. But then when they see you lingering around when some crude, immoral story is being told, your actions are speaking so loud they probably can't hear your words anymore. And if they're hearing you, the Bible talks about evil communications, corrupt good manners. If they're hearing you speak in such a way that doesn't become a Christian, you say, well, how do they know what a Christian is supposed to act like? They know a whole lot more than you think they do. I'll tell you one thing, the unsaved world knows about what a Christian's supposed to be doing. They don't have all the ins and outs worked out, but they know about what a Christian's supposed to be talking like. And so what the Word of God says is, if somebody seems to be religious, and they button up their suit coat, and they come into church, and they seem to be the, the, the holier, holier-than-thou person, but they can't keep that tongue bridled, that man's religion is vain, or it's useless, it's not doing very much for him. Now, remember, we're friends in here. We all know what it's like to try to walk in the Spirit, but the flesh keeps beating us up. And so I give you more of a break, and you give me more of a break because you've been where I'm at. I feel you, brother. But you know who doesn't give us a break very often? 
the unsaved world. Because what they see is, you've been preaching all this stuff, but now you won't live it. I come alongside and you say, listen, I've been where you're at. <laughs> the flesh got the best of me and many a time. Let's, let's work on it. But the unsaved world that you work with, they don't have that same long suffering because all they're hearing is you being the preacher boy, the, uh, the, the church lady, you being the whoever, and saying all those things, and then they see you act totally contrary to the conception in their mind that they have of what a Christian's supposed to be, and it makes your life, it makes your testimony well nigh vain or useless. So we see these, this religious deception, that person that thinks they're such a, such a spiritual giant, but really they're just an imposter to some degree. I passed the fellow the other day, and we were, we were coming in this big office building. He looked religious, had a long black robe on. He had his collar turned around backwards and had a little, be a little beanie cap on, and he was certainly, I'm not sure all that he was, but I know he was a reverend of some sort. So to the world, they would say, that is a religious person. And you may not dress that way, and I certainly don't dress that way, but everybody that you work with, if you work with them for very long, they know that you're some kind of religious person. And if any man among you seem to be religious, brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. Like I said, you can lie to yourself all along and just say, well, well nobody can be perfect, and they can't. Deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is vain. But then we see that in verse number 27, the hearing and the doing is what quantifies pure religion. It's amazing what God lists here in that verse as pure religion. Visit the helpless, the fatherless, the widows, the people who need that. And obviously everybody in those groups aren't in need, but it gives the umbrella to show you that the people that need stuff, those are the ones that we're supposed to be helping. I just wanted to share with you this evening that you and I are supposed to be hearers and doers of the Word. I wanted to share with you that one aspect of it that maybe you and I could give a break to some of those people we say, how could they stay in that church, whatever that church is, maybe an undoctrinal church, I believe that as the Scripture says in verse number 22, they may be deceiving their own selves, thinking that I can make a difference or I can do this. But regardless of what they do, I'm, saying, I'm talking to us that we be those hearers and doers. And can I leave you with this, the old adage, and it's, it's not new to you, and I'm certainly not going to impress you with my knowledge, but you and I truly are the only Bible that some people will ever read. Would you be a good copy of it? Now, I understand that you falter and fail as I do. But I'm telling you, we're going to have to be those hearers and those doers because the world desperately needs to see some genuine Christians. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the chance to study into your word a little bit. I pray to your Lord that you would let it sink into us. And I pray there's somebody here that would determine in their heart right now, dear Lord, that they're not going to be a hearer, but they're going to be a doer. And Lord, I pray that if we've already made those decisions, that we would hammer down on it. We'd, we'd re-enlist in that endeavor tonight to not be somebody who knows it, hears it, walks away from the mirror and not changing, but we're that hearer and that doer. And Lord, I pray that you'd settle that into our hearts. And I pray if there's somebody that's unsaved, dear Lord, that tonight I pray that they would realize their need for Jesus Christ alone as their Savior. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, in just a moment I'm going to have you stand. But here's the invitation. You're welcome to come down the front and pray. But maybe you're that one that, boy, there's a lot of hearing going on. You know what you're supposed to do, but doing sometimes is a different story. Would you make this the night when you claim to, when you promise to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to be a doer, hearer, and a doer. And then if you're here tonight and you're not sure that you're on your way to heaven, I didn't know I preach about that, but you've got something 
squeezing on the inside of you, showing you, telling you that you need to get your eternal destiny settled. And I challenge you, my friend, to not leave here without doing that, that you'd step out when we stand and let me or somebody take a Bible and show you how you'd be sure heaven's your home. Would you stand together as the ladies play something through? If you're able to, stand together with us. If God's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come. <coughs> That walk of yours speaks a lot louder than that talk of yours. Blessings and cursings can't come out of the same swell. The altar is open for you. If you'd like to come, I invite you to. Thank you. You can look this way. I'm going to ask our brother. I forget your last name. I have it on a card, but I left it back this way. Why don't you come on up here? And if you're able to, if you just sit for just a second, folks, and I'm going to have him dismiss us in prayer, but then just take a minute or two and just introduce yourself and your wife to us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here and just to uh, introduce ourselves. My name is Ian Africio. I'm 23 years old. I have with me my wife. She's Amelia Africio. She's 21 years old, and we just got married last November, and we are missionaries to Baguio City, Philippines. Just a brief overview of uh, what we do. My parents started Cornerstone Fundamental Baptist Church in Limay, Bataan. We've been there for 23 years, basically my whole life. And for the last 23 years, with God's help and with provisions that God given us, we were able to start and build 20 churches in the whole province of Bataan. And um, that wouldn't be possible without God and without His guidance. And 10 years ago, they also started um, Heartbeat Baptist Bible College, where we trained future leaders and um, preachers. And my ministry, before I surrendered my life to God, was in the youth ministry. And through that ministry, God called me to be in Baguio City, Philippines. We're going to be going there January of next year, and we need your help and your prayers as we go there. Uh, my wife, she's born and raised in Texas. She hasn't been to Philippines yet. Um, there's going to be a lot of adjustments, especially with um, language and especially food. Um, you know, sometimes our foods are kind of, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into it, but, you know, <laughs> just like open for discussion. Um, but just want to thank Pastor for giving me the opportunity to be here. And um, let's bow our head, close our eyes, and uh, co- uh, go to God in word of prayer to uh, close this. Um, service. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank Lord for the opportunity to be here and serve you, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for your word, the bringing of your word, thank you for the study of James chapter 1, as we not only be a hearer of your word, Lord, but be also be a doer. And we just ask that you guide us and um, bless us as we go about our week, all these things we ask. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm going to ask him to slip back to the lobby. He grab his wife on the way, and maybe you'll get by and get to meet him and let him know you'll be praying for him. We'll ask Brother Roebuck, if you don't mind, to slip back to your table there, and you'll find some more information out about the FBN network and uh, the good work that they're doing. You check them out online and uh, know better how to pray for them as they're trying to get the gospel across the airwaves, and uh, we'll, we'll be a blessing. Our church has given something. Brother Birch taking care of, of getting these two men something that we can be a blessing as they leave on and go to their next preaching station or wherever God has for them. And so we don't want them to come in and not uh, be a blessing to them. Don't forget to pray for Brother Nathan Susong as a heavy night for him. If, again, if you usually text or communicate with him, shoot him a text and let him know that you're praying for him. And please don't forget to pray for Brother Paul Pritchard Jr. 1030 in the morning. Um, he'll be having that surgery on his heart and keep him in prayer. And uh, it's such a good joy to have uh, Brother Myron and Miss Sandra Hoffert. They're right here by Carmen. And uh, they are wonderful friends now for 
25 years, I guess, or something. And so we're so blessed that, uh, that they are here, and uh, they serve at Marion Avenue Baptist Church, which Brother Dan and I both served at in Iowa, and uh, wonderful, wonderful servants of the Lord. And I hope you'll get by and meet them as well. But thank you for being in church tonight. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>